This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another episode of Fixing Conan Exiles. We're going to continue learning about the Pippi mod today, so let's get to it. All right, so we got a lot to cover today and only 20 minutes to do it because I want this to be the final episode of covering the Pippi mod. So we're going to start off taking a look at the uh, zones here. Now these can be, everything I'm going to show you today can be spawned in. You go over here to the old cheat menu and you go down to the bottom here and this is this is all the the pippy stuff so some of this is still work in progress stuff like the cam lock so i'm not going to cover that the zones in testing but it seems to be working pretty good so we'll leave that this says don't use so we're not even going to mess with that and uh, we'll get to this other stuff here so anyway the zones they give you control of the area and uh, they allow you to stop building damage and stuff like that so you can make specific structures you know like a giant market or whatever dungeon what have you and you can stop players from uh, damaging the buildings you can stop you can make a safe zone for new players stop player damage uh, you can stop player hunger player thirst all that good stuff then over here we have the enable whether it's enable or disabled uh, disable the interaction GUI allow clan members this would be like if you own it if you're giving them out to people which I don't advise doing because they're super OP this is the shape of it is it a spear is it a square and this is the visualize the area so if we click apply after clicking visualize you can see it shows you the area in which it's affecting so then we can come back over here we can click this back off you can actually change the color as well um, and then you can change the color of the structures that are in it but I think this is currently disabled because it doesn't seem to be doing anything so if we like click that yeah yeah it doesn't it doesn't seem to be working i just messed with a little bit i'm not sure if this is this is active or not i vaguely remember reading something in the notes that it was currently disabled then over here we have the controls which just allows you to change the size and then this here will allow you to change the uh, visualization color so if we do like bright yellow or whatever it should change there we go i got it to change i just had to back out and go back in it so there you go. That's uh, that's it for the zones. That's pretty much all you need to, to know about those. Next up, we have the egress, egress. I'm assuming it's pronounced egress. And uh, that's these right here. They just look like little locks. They are highly controllable, configurable doors, and they're super handy. Now, you could give these out to people, then they're not going to be too OP. They only become really OP when you can stop players from damaging a building. And I'm going to show you here near the end of this video how you can combine all of this together to do some amazing stuff so anyway the egress is super configurable and if we actually go into the settings here so we have the enable disable uh, enable or disable the interaction GUI allow clan members announce when it's been open and you can globally announce that as well then we have specific dates that you can set which would be at you know open or closed and uh, then we can set the minimum and maximum level of which you can you know mess with the door then we have the duration in which it'll stay open and if you set this to zero it, it'll disable the auto close so uh, essentially like it'll stay open right now for five seconds and then auto close you can set an entry cost and you can set a, an actual password to it as well and then over here we have the visual of it so you can change how it looks you can even set it to be a gate if you want it or a hatch if you want that uh, we're going to set it back to to the tier uh four door here and then you can require a specific rank in order to get into it and you can make that inheritable or not uh, you can set a specific guild rank so if you're get allowing players to use these they can you know section off specific sections of the the their buildings or what have you uh, then you can require an item and you can actually like have it remove that item as well in the specific amount so you see here we have all the different items in the game that we can go through here and uh, you can pick the item and then you just click that and then we'll remove the item so you can make like a key to get into it and it'll take away the key or you can leave it on un this unchecked and they just have to have that item in their inventory to use it you can actually charge uh, the fee here like I showed you and then you can collect that so you can see here it's already uh, used 20 bronze and we can just collect that 20 bronze that's what I have it set to now is just to uh, take t uh, 10 bronze from you 
every time you use it. So now if we open it, you can see down there at the bottom, it's uh, deducted 10 bronze from my wallet. Next up we have wallpaper and wallpaper is something that I have used everywhere around here. I use it frequently for green screens because it's super handy for that. So essentially what it is, you just place it down like so and then it just shows you this, right? And then you activate it and you have a bunch of options here. So you can give it a name, you can disable the interaction GUI, once again, allow clan members. You can make it solid or not solid, and that's an important one because you can essentially create a wall out of it. And then you can set the dimensions, but here's the important part. So anywhere online where you can have an image, and I like to use uh, Imgur for this because they, it links really well using Imgur, uh, you can just place the URL in there. So if we go over here and we'll just uh, copy and paste this green screen that I've been using and we come over here and we place the URL and click apply. There you go. You can see that it has made a green screen and then we can actually change the size of that. So we just uh, do that, click apply and there you go. And that's it. That's what wallpaper does. And you can use any image, any image at all. And if you use a PNG image, it will uh, not, not show the background of the PNG image. So really cool stuff there, really handy little thing, especially if you're like doing cool photos, you want green screens or j just whatever. Next up, we have the Pippi Jack. That's this right here. And if we place it down, you can see it creates a table. You hit E to activate it. And it essentially allows you to play cards. So I don't have anybody else at the table, but, uh, yeah, that's that's that. Next up, we have the portals. This is this one here, and it allows you to activate a warp location, any warp location you have set, and allows people just to walk up to it and use it. So we have, of course, the enable or disable. We're gonna go ahead and click enable there. We have the enable or disable the interaction GUI, allow clan members. A show display so it shows the the name of it so if we click that and click uh, apply you can see it says test and if I click that click apply you can see that that is now gone you can have use warp permissions so whatever permissions you have set for the actual warp itself so if you wanted to charge people any of that stuff uh, and if you're not sure what I'm talking about here go back and look at the previous videos there'll be links for them in the description everywhere that you could possibly want to link up here in the corner all that good stuff anyway uh it'll actually use that so if you have it set to say take a silver every time on the warp permission then when you go through here it'll take a silver every time uh, you can change the size of it so click apply you can see it's gotten bigger gotten smaller change the color to whatever the color you want there you go change the opacity so you can make it nice and see-through which is pretty cool or you can get rid of the opacity altogether. Now we're just going to, uh, let's just do this one here. Click apply, click close. And now if I walk through it, you can see it just teleports me right up there where I had it set. So pretty cool little feature. Um, those are really handy for a lot of different things. Once again, I'll show you more in depth to how we can use those here in a bit. All right, next up we have thespians and thespians are absolutely crazy with the amount of stuff you can do with them. So right there is what they look like. Their icon looks like. So if we uh, place one of them down and we, uh, you get this person here. Now you can give them a name, profession. You can change the type of thespian they are. You can enable, disable their GUI, allow clan members. You can set them to repeat specific emotes. You can set the speed of the emote. You can lock it to a specific uh, position, so a specific frame in the emote animation. You can set them to use uh, equipment as a kit. So if we do like this one that I have preset and click apply, you can see it just applies that equipment to her. So we're gonna click that back to none. Then you can have an actual equipment editor where you can drag and drop specific parts of equipment uh, into these little slots and it will apply them. So if we drag over this here and scroll down to this here, I just have hands and I just grab two things real quick and we click apply you can see behind there that it well actually I'll just back out you can see that it applied them to her so it doesn't actually take them out of your inventory when you do that and it will apply colors as well so if these were dyed uh, they would show up dyed on them and then you can just do that click the X's click apply and then you have multiple loadouts there that you can choose from if you would prefer to change them on the fly 
So let's go ahead and we will back out of that. Then we can go into the character editor. And this is super advanced. It's pretty much as advanced as when creating your character. You can do a lot of different things. So we can change the sex of the, the uh, thespian. And then we can change their face to a de you know default base face. We can get into the scalers here in a second that allow you to customize it more. You can change the hair type. So click apply. You can see that that took effect. Behind there, you can give the females actual facial hair, which is absolutely hilarious. Let's let's not. And uh, you can change the eyebrows. You you get the idea. Give them different body paints on different parts of their body. So if you only wanted facial body paint, you could do that. Then we go over here to the color. So this just allows you to control all of the colors. So change hair color, change skin color all of that different stuff. Then we have scalers. So the scalers will actually allow you to customize the face from the base faces. And this was just added. So I'm really glad they added this because before you only had the, the default options. So we also have the body options as well. Like you can change the bus size, you can change, you know, I'm going to have to blur that out, but the, the phallic size, uh, you can change the eyes. Um, let's zoom in on the face so you can see eye size nose, all of that stuff. And you can actually uncheck the vanilla ranges to go past the vanilla ranges to do absolutely craziness. But yeah, let's leave it on vanilla ranges and then we'll just click apply and we'll go back out. So you get the idea on how that works. Next up, we have a couple different options here. So you can create a banker, you can create a social merchant and you can create a dialogue merchant. The dialogue merchant goes along with the Mushi editor and we'll get into that here in a minute. Normal people, only admins will have access to the dialogue that's being normal people. If you give this, this to say just people on your server, if you want to allow them to have uh, these, they will only have access to regular um, unless you go into your settings. So if we go over here to the admin menu and you go to economy and you look down here, it says allow social merchant and I have that enabled right now. So that is what will allow your normal players to access anything, uh, you know, the banker and the social merchant. Otherwise they'll only get regular and basically they just stand around and do whatever. So like you could set taunt and then click apply and um, well, she's not doing it. Let's try neon ground animation close okay so i just deleted that one and placed another one it looks like this might be bugged right now uh normally they just do whatever this emote is and that's all the regular ones can do but for some reason that does not seem to be working right now yeah and swapping it to the different ones doesn't seem to be working either anyway so let's take a look at the banker so you click apply and now she should be a banker and you could set this up for like your guild or what have you so they could you know give funds split funds whatever uh deposit them you don't lose your funds when you die so this would just be specifically for that so we can say deposit I don't know, 15 silver, click deposit. Now you can see that it shows the available funds and then we can go through and withdraw that. There you go. And now we withdrew it. So that's pretty much all the banker does. All right, so now let's look, take a look here at the social merchant. We're actually gonna pick her up because I have a social merchant already set up to go over here. So what you do is you just set them to social merchant, then make sure all of your other settings are set to where you want them back out. And then when you look at them and hit E, it brings up this menu if you are the owner. If you are not the owner, Hi. this is what you will see here. So let's close Take this, care. let's go back into this and we'll talk about this real quick. So essentially all you do is you just drag the item that you wanna sell, let's uh, let's see here, what do we wanna, let's drag over the old Pippi Jack and uh, then you set the price that you wanna sell it for and then you click sell and then it adds it to the list here. If you don't wanna sell that item anymore, you can just click cancel. So we'll come down here to this, we'll click cancel and you can see that it put it back in my inventory. Now you can also clear the sold items. You can return uh, all items to your inventory and then you can withdraw the funds. So you can see here it shows your merchant's uh, current funds. Now, essentially this allows you just to create your own custom shops, which is really handy and cool. So we're just going to uh, hit E and then we're gonna hit Greetings. E to activate it again. And we're gonna take a look at this. So let's, uh, let's say I wanna buy these 10 pots. So that's gonna cost me 50 copper to buy the 10 pots. We'll just click Great. okay and purchase them. And uh, now if we back out, we go into my inventory here. 
uh, you can see that I have the 10 pots. And if we look at him, you can see he now has the 50 bronze. So then we'll just withdraw the funds there. And then want to resell these. Let's uh, let's say we'll sell these for two silver that time. And then we just put them back. And um, you can see here that it shows you that this was item was sold. So we can just do that. Click clear. And now we uh, that way it keeps a record of so you know what you sold, what you haven't sold. And uh, yeah, that's it for the social merchant. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the more complex thespian. So we're going to click on dialogue thespian and we're going to go over here to the Mushi editor. Now, this is a visual scripting editor and it allows you to create all kinds of stuff. You can create quest lines, uh, just all kinds of stuff. So we're gonna take a look at the couple different nodes here, and then I'll show you some examples of what you can do. So you have the dialogue node, and that is essentially them talking. So we'll just do hi, and now if we connect this node to this node here, we go up here and click save, and then we click close, apply, close, and then we look at her and we hit E. That's it, she says hi. That's all. Now, if we now that she is that a dialogue merchant, she has dialogue. When I hit E, it's always going to do that to get into her, edit her again. I have to hold down E and then go over here to the edit menu. All right, so we're going to launch the Mushi editor again. Now, this time we're going to take a look at the option nodes. So these give you options over on the left hand side to select. So we're going to add two option nodes there. We're going to do yes and we're going to do no. And then we'll click like that and then we'll click that one and connect it to there. And now if we save it, save, close, apply, close, and we activate her, you can see we have yes and no, but they don't do anything. So if we want them to do something, we need to go in and we need to add options for them to do something. So we'll go back, we'll launch the editor again. Now you have conditions, which basically say, uh, is this condi condition met? So you can ask, do they have an item? Do they have a level? Are they in a level range? Uh, do they have a quest? Is the quest complete? Do they have funds? Do they have a recipe? Or do they have a rank? And then you have true or false, and then you can lead those out to different nodes uh, from that point. And then we have action. Action allows you to do a bunch of different stuff. You can give an item, remove an item, give a quest, complete a quest, delete a quest, give funds, remove funds, trigger something, uh, which is like to trigger something around them. So like if there's an egress nearby or a spawner nearby, you can trigger that to like open or to spawn an item or to spawn a creature. You can give a recipe, you can remove a recipe, play a sound, give experience, close dialogue, uh, set a rank, warp a player or modify stats. And we have the bounce. So essentially what this does is allow you to connect nodes without them being connected. So if we say land here, and we go over here and we create another one and we say bounce. We want this to bounce to four. So we'll click that. We will connect this to here and we will connect this one to here. Oh, that's going to create a loop. We need a, a dialogue or something in between that. Uh, let's create a new dialogue. So now what will happen is it'll just it'll loop back onto itself. And I'll show you that here in a second as soon as we get through these. Uh, then you have the randomizer, which will just gives you random options. And then we have the wait node, which will wait for a second. And I'll explain all these in detail in a second. So let's go ahead and we will save, we'll close, we'll apply close. Now when we take a look at her, no, no still does nothing. If we click yes though, yes just bounces us back because we didn't wait. So in order to actually have her say what she's supposed to say because everything is instant, we would have to cancel this and then we'd have to put a wait note in here. Now when we activate her and we click yes, she says stuff and then she bounces right back. Okay, so let's take a look at how these can be used uh, a little more advanced. And if you want to see advanced uh, tutorials on how to do this and different scripts and different things you can do, let me know and I'll do a whole series on the Mushi Editor because it's really complex and there's a crazy amount of stuff you can do with it. Now I'm going to show you some really cool stuff, but I'm not going to get into a ton of detail. This is just examples so you have an idea of what you can do with this mod. So if you want detailed uh, scripting tutorials, let me know in the comments and We'll, we'll make it happen. What I've set up here is a little quest chain. 
just between these two here and then they're going to give me an item that's going to allow me to talk to this or to use this guy over here so we're going to start off we're going to talk to her uh she says do you seek adventure yes i do seek adventure you can see we just started the fetch quest Okay, so now we need a specific item, but she doesn't tell me what that item is. Normally you would have them tell you what that item is. It's the item that's in this chest. It's five stone. So we're going to take the five stone out of the chest and uh, then we're going to back out of it. Now, if I did not have that five stone, let's actually, let's drop that five stone and we come over here and we talk to her. She's the person we need to talk to. She knows that I have the quest, but she says, do you have the item? Uh, if I tell her yes, because that's my only option, you do not have what you need. Okay, so we need we need the item from the chest. So let's grab the five stone, close out. Now if we talk to her, do you have the item? We click yes. I see you have it. Click yes again. Uh, we've completed the quest and uh, she gave us some keys. Now that we don't have the quest anymore, if we just talk to her, she just says hello. So she, she only gives us those options if we have the quest. Now that we have the key, we can come over here and we can talk to this guy. And he says, would you like to go to your private vault? Now, what I have done is I have set up, we'll have to go to our uh, tab over here. I have set up a specific rank. So if we come over to the Pippi settings and we look, I have the vault rank for vault rank one. That's going to allow me to access uh, a specific vault in the vaults area. Now, he needs a key in order to teleport you. So we're going to tell him, he says, would you like to go to your private vault? We're going to say, yes, we have the key. So he removed the key and he teleported us to the vault. Now, I have this whole area set up here so that you cannot damage it using the uh, zones that we talked about earlier. Now, if we look here, each of these is set up for a, a specific rank numbered vault. So vault one, vault two, vault three, vault four, vault blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. We have vault one. So because we have vault one, we can access vault one and we have a private vault that we can store stuff in. So if you're playing on that PVP server and you got PVP set up and you want like a, a private vault set up for your PVP people where they can stash items that they never have to worry about losing, you could set something like that up doing something, you know, something similar to this. Now, when we want to leave, we just walk through the portal, which I already showed you how to use or how to set up and then it pops us back out here. So let's take a look at how I have that set up just real quick. We'll browse over it. Now I want to want to do this. So we'll launch her Mushi editor and you can see I did a dialogue node, yes or no. If we click no, she just says okay. And uh, if we do yes, then she gives us the quest. The quest name is fetch and it expires in two hours. So you have two hours to complete it. You can set expirations. If I didn't set an expiration, it would just never expire. And then when you, uh, you know, accept it, she tells you good luck and you don't actually see this part here. It just says, yes, good luck. And that's it. Now, if we take a look at this one, this one is much more complex. You can see there is a lot going on here. So first off, uh, she says, hello. And then if you have, we have a condition here. So if you have the fetch quest, you get to see, do you have the item? And then you get the option for, she'll say this instead of hello. And then you have the option for yes. Then it's another conditional node. And then she goes into, I see you have it if you have it. And then you get the option for yes again. And then she says, take this. And then you get all this and then good luck. And then if we go down here, uh, she says, uh, you do not have what you need. She waits and then it bounces you back up to here where she says, hello. So if we take a look at the gatekeeper here, you can see the gatekeeper is much simpler. So he just says, would you like to go to your private vault? Yes or no. If you click no, nothing happens. If you click yes, he needs to make sure you have the item. The item is the key. You can look up items here. So I just typed in key and did the skeleton key and you put in the item number. You need to have one of them. And uh, if you have it, he teleports you. If you don't, uh, he just says that you lack the key. So and then one more example of what you can do. I set up a little lady over here. Uh, she's a demon. She allows you to gamble. And let's take a look at her nodes real quick here so you can see what I've done and then I'll show you it activated. So uh, I use the randomize node. So it just random picks one of these different options here. So uh, she'll steal a silver from you if you have it. Uh, she'll give you some bark. 
And once again, we have, I just did the search and just searched for, just use the first one here just cause. So it just use the item ID for bark. She'll give you five of them. She'll give you 10 bronze. She'll laugh at you and trigger this spawner over here, which spawns a scorpion. She will take 20 health from you or take 50 health from you. And so she essentially damages you. And uh, if you say no, then it just ends. And if you do one of these, it waits and then it bounces you back over to here and she asks you again. So let's see that in use here. So we're just gonna click nah, close, and we'll just activate her. Would you like to gamble? Yes, haha, -ha. she just spawned a scorpion. And <laughs> like, would you like to gamble? This will hurt a little. So now you can see up there, she just damaged my health a little bit. So that's just a pretty cool little thing you can do. You could set up, I mean, you could do all kinds of different stuff. You could get different items. You could just have it default to nothing. You could just take money. You could have it straight up just gamble with money. You could have her gamble every time. So before she even activates anything, she takes 10 silver from you and then either takes more silver or, or does nothing or gives you silver. A lot of different crazy cool things with the quests. The quests are something that could add a lot lot to especially pve servers let alone pvp servers like pve servers you could have a blast with these setting up different events and all kinds of crazy neat stuff um and then you could do stuff with the teleporters where they teleport you you know people just go to this guy and you know have a whole event set up for a weekend and it starts by talking to this guy here who teleports you to a location you know just all kinds of crazy things you could allow people to use the thespians and create custom shops just a a lot that you can do with this mod okay I think we covered just about everything there is to cover I know this one was a little rushed there was a lot of stuff to cover I didn't want this to be 500 episodes long so that is going to wrap it up for this episode if you like what you saw consider hitting that sub button I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible you all are absolutely amazing people if you'd like to join my elite crew of patreon supporters please check out the link in the description below if you enjoyed this video please leave a comment down below let me know what you thought if you're shy you don't like to comment just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.